So my name is Haley Hoffman and I'm doing my oral report on Thomas Aquinas. Um, Thomas Aquinas was best known as a philosopher and a Catholic scholar. He was born in 1225 in Italy in his father Count Landolf's castle. Um, Thomas Aquinas was the youngest in his family of seven kids. Aquinas was sent to study at Cologne, which is a school in Germany. Um, at Cologne, he studied under Albertus Magnus, who was a Dominican friar and bishop. In his studies at Cologne, he was also ordained a priest in the Catholic Church. He then went to Paris for a master's degree, and after he received his degree, he became a professor at the University of Paris. Um, it was said that his association with Albertus Magnus was one of the most um, important influences in his development as an educator and a philosopher. Um, Aquinas was a Catholic priest in the Dominican order. He was one of the most important medieval philosophers and theologians. Um, his philosophy as an educator is called neo-scholasticism. Um, when you look at the suffix um, meaning neo, it means new, um, which was re later referred to neo-Thomism because of Thomas Aquinas and his influence on the education world. Um, Neo-Thomism was also known as one of the traditional philosophies. Um, it is said in the textbook that Neo-Thomists believe that God gives meaning and purpose to the universe. Um, in Neo-Thomism, it consists of several kinds of philosophies including idealism, realism, and theos theistic realism. Um, realism. Aquinas was one of the main figures of scholasticism. Um, along with several other um, figures of this philosophy. In Thomas Aquinas' book, he explains his beliefs in God. Um, with his philosophy, he says, The believer and the philosopher consider creatures differently. The philosopher considers what belongs to their proper natures, while the believer consists only what is true of creatures, insofar as they are related to God. For example, that they were created by God and are subject to him and the like. Um, that was in one of his books that he had written um, when he was in Italy, or in Paris, excuse me. Um, Thomas Aquinas' method was influenced by Albertus Magnus, which was previously stated, um, but this influence led Aquinas to an Aristotelian method, and the, that method is a method of study that emphasizes the relation between a general category and a specific object. Um, with this method, he then taught a few years in Paris, at the University of Paris, um, and while Aquinas remained in Paris to teach, he began to write some of his famous works, and some of these works that he was best known for um, was called Summa Contra Gentiles and Summa Theology. Um, when reflecting on some of the major contributions that Thomas Aquinas made in the education world, um, I began to realize really what um, that his contributions in the edu education world um, have been very great and there have been numerous major contributions. Um, one of the major contributions that I found in research was his Summa Theological works which was his evidence that there is a God and in this works of Aquinas all of his views are clearly stated. Um, his book is set up in three different parts, and um, I'm just going to go over a few of the, or I'm going to go over those parts that are in this book, um, one of his most famous works. And in the first part of this work, he talks about the existence of God and um, his personal belief in God. Secondly, he talks about ethics and continues on talking about God and bases his beliefs on Aristotle. Um, part three of his works talks about Christ. Aquinas believed that the way to Christ was through God, and that's why he themed one of the sections as Christ. Thomas Aquinas made major contributions to the Catholic Church uh, um, and how it operates today in today's society. Um, it is said to his, that his works, thoughts, and ideas have still made an effect on metaphysics, philosophy of mind, and etc. Um, Thomas Aquinas has made several effects that are still happening today. There is a college after his name in Santa Paula, California. Um, the school was established in 1969 as a Catholic college. It is said that in this college, the primary teachers are the people who illustrated the books. Um, the books that they study are from the authors of Thomas Aquinas, Aristotle, T.S. Eliot, and Albert Einstein. 
Um, hundreds of years later, Thomas Aquinas still has an effect on today's education. Um, as I was thinking about how Thomas Aquinas has had an effect on me and my education personally, um, I looked back at the Aristotelian method and the individual philosophies that are associated um, with this method in which um, Thomas Aquinas had practiced. And these individual philosophies include idealism, realism, and theistic realism. When I look at idealism and how it has played a role in my education, I realize that it plays a significant role. Um, in the textbook it talks about idealism and um, there's a quote that I found on idealist, idealism and it says, Idealists accept the premise that all knowledge includes a mental grasp of ideas and concepts. Um, I think that in today's society we are taught and should seek help until we fully understand the idea or concept. Um, now about realism, which is another philosophy that he, um, he associated with the Aristotelian method. Um, when looking closely at realism, I think that some courses that I have taken may fall into the category of realism. Even though this may not be a common philosophy in some courses, I think that when we look at the senses and how the mind perceives nature, that is realism. Um, realism was one of the earlier philosophies and can still be practiced today in schools. Um, overall, I have um, seen a major influence that Thomas Aquinas has had on, the, um, on educators on the world and in education today, and with his experience and his thinking and his thoughts, and we have all looked up to him as a great educator in history, um, and when learning about Thomas Aquinas, we learn about the importance of um, the early philosophers of education.